In this video, we're going to find out how to get Embergen to generate a bunch of different variations of a simulation. Maybe you've got your simulation roughly where you want it and you want to explore some different uh, looks and some different motion. Or maybe you've got a complicated shot that requires 20 or 30 similar but different effects. Either way, Embergen makes this so easy. It's actually really fun and it's a neat way to explore what's possible. So let's take a look. So to start with, if we head over to our randomized tab down here, we can see that Embergen's already got a way to randomize a bunch of things right from the off. If I hit this randomize all button here, it's going to randomize the seed for each of these values. And these all feed into the various noises that we've got in our simulation. So in fact, let's, let's play it once without the randomization. So dumping some fuel into the scene, we're going to ignite it. Okay, there's our like our default explosion. Let's hit randomize all, and that's going to inject a different seed into each of these values. Go back to the beginning. We should have a slightly different looking explosion. Yeah, it seems to have done the trick. So those different noise values, we've got some, some smaller ones, some large ones, and they are shaping, for instance, the way that the fuel is falling in the scene. But we can do a lot more than just randomizing the seeds, although that, that goes a fair way. There's, there's more things that we can do. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at the primitive shape that is feeding into both our fuel emitter and it's also kicking the particles out. They aren't really adding anything other than just a little bit of visual flourish. They just sit there to ride on the smoke really. Uh, but they're all coming out of the shape. So let's randomize this shape somehow. If you hold the shift key and then click on here, we can see this die shows up. Uh, if we head back over to our randomize tab, we can see that this is showing up in here now. Uh, and I can just randomize that by itself. That's going to give us a different shape. Or if we hit randomize all, it's going to re-randomize all of the seeds and also the shape at the same time. So let's check out what that looks like. Nice. All right, let's take it further. So if we go back to our primitive shape, let's vary whereabouts our shape is inside of our domain. So shift and click. Uh, let's also do the rotation while we're at it back over to our randomized tab and it shows up here. Now this is slightly different. It gives you a range to work within. So if I just randomize really quickly on the X axis, it's going to move that shape off and it may well fall outside of our domain. Seems all right, but I don't want it to be all the way over the side. It's going to cut off the side of the explosions. Let's say minus 40, positive 40. All right, so every time we hit randomize all, uh, we are getting a slightly more different looking explosion uh, than we were when we were just, uh, you know, reseeding things. So now you've worked out how to uh, get your variations running and, you know, you can really quickly, really easily produce these variations from a single starting point. Um, but you're going to want to export these out uh, and you're not going to want to be hitting file save as number one, file save as number two. Uh, that could be a headache really, really quickly, especially if you're doing 20 or 30 of these. Uh, and it get even worse when you're going to the render path and you're, you're manually typing in new render paths here. Uh, so there's actually a nice, easy, built-in way to do this. So first things first, let's go File, Save As, give it a nice, sane name. I'm just going to call it Variations OG. And I know where that is, and everything we do is going to be coming from that file. Let's go up to File, Export Variations, and check out this window. So... Let's go for three variations. Let's randomize that first one. And let's save a copy of each randomization that we produce uh, because you know we might find the one that we really, really like and we want to go back and tweak it just to get it exactly how we want it. Uh, let's say where we're going to put this. So Project Dirt, it is picking up the folder that we just saved this file in, so it's going to use that and give it a name. Okay, so it's going to base it on this name and it's going to append a variation number to it. Uh, nodes to export, you've got our render node over here. We are only just exporting uh, like the default flat view. We're not pushing out any alpha information or individual channels. We're just getting a default render of it. Uh, and one more thing that we do need to do before we do this, we go over to our render node and we make sure in our directory that we add variation here. Um, I, I don't think that's going to always be the case. I think this is just where this is quite new. Um, if you don't add this, then as you save the variations, they actually save over the top of each other. Um, so, you know, you will finish the first run. The second run will just go straight over the top of the first. Uh, adding this in, 
it will create a, a new folder with a new number and it's going to create a new folder for each variation. So back over to our export variations window. Still set up, this is great, this is all good, this is all good, let's go. All right, all done. So that took about, well, what, two, three minutes? Um, and yeah, so we've got a folder for each one. Lovely, there's our frame sequence. Let's check they are actually different, they definitely are. We've got the project file saved for each one. All right, so these numbers all correspond to the folders. Um, you know, one of these might be absolutely perfect and we wanna go back and we wanna just sort of massage the settings a little bit more. So you can do that now, which is good. And I probably would have killed for this functionality a year ago when I was making, you know, 30 or 40 individual but similar assets. Um, there was a lot of clicking and a lot of typing there. Let's put it through its paces. Let's add a few more changes. Okay, so there's a bit more variation thrown in there. I was playing around with the verticals uh, and a little bit more of playing around with the shapes. So like the, the radius and the height of whatever shape shows up. So let's run it again. Let's, let's go file, export variations. Let's do 10. We're gonna leave this over on this side. And we're gonna go. So can other software do this? Yeah, absolutely it can. Uh, I think the difference is you don't need a university degree to do this. And you know, it's, it's so quick and so easy. You could, uh, you could think of this as wedging in a way. Wedging is when you would be running a simulation a whole bunch of times with slightly different values, you know, for different properties uh, and seeing what works and, and what doesn't. Uh, but I've, I've never found a way to do it this easily before. All right. 10 variations inside of what? Let's see, five minutes, four minutes. That's pretty good. So just to run you over that really quickly again, you get your simulation roughly where you want it. So it acts roughly how you would like it to act. Uh, you head over to your randomized tab. And to begin with, it's just gonna show you the various seeds, okay? These things would be in there anyway. Uh, you would find the things that you want to change in your simulation holding the shift key and just click to the left. All right, when the dice shows up, that means it's gonna show up in the randomized tab. And this is where you can make your changes. More often than not, it's going to be a range that you will set up for you know the value that you want to be changed. And it's a case of hitting randomize all, running your simulation again, making sure it's not too much of a crazy change that you've added in. You know, you might wanna be quite subtle with some of these, um, but experiment. Once you've got it all set up, you're gonna go over to your render node, making sure that you've got variation added into the end of your path, okay? And then over to file, export variations, give it a number, and then hit go. And then you make a coffee, and you watch your folder fill up with variations. Wicked. All right, if you've got any questions, hit me up on the Discord, uh, and I will see you in the next video.